Okay, in this video, uh, we're going to take things a little bit further. We're going to see how we kind of open up other projects and uh, maybe stitch together a new project based upon some old ones. Like a, a common thing in embedded systems is you always get example code with nice projects, but more often than not, you want to take like bits and pieces and maybe put stuff together. So that, that's an important skill to have and to kind of see how things work, maybe on a little lower level with the IDE. So the first thing we're going to do is I have some projects um, in my directory here um, and we're I have a project called clock setup that sets up the um, the multi-purpose clock generator module in the uh, in in this device here so um, I want to be able to kind of take that uh, we're gonna open it up but I would merge some of that code into our quick stick test code uh, and we're gonna kinda look there, there's a lot of ways to do this but we're gonna look at somewhat of a low-level way um, just moving files around just to kind of see how things work. Um, but first, let's just, I want to open up this project. Now, one thing with Eclipse uh, that's different about other IDE, Eclipse and other IDEs, is that you don't really open projects. You import them into your workspace. So we're going to import a project in our workspace. And when you import into your workspace, that doesn't necessarily mean you import the actual files. You're importing a reference to files that are somewhere else. So I can go under File Import, or I can just right click in my workspace and go to Import. And here's what we want. We want existing projects into our workspace. So the first thing it wants to know is the root directory. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is um, I want to get here was the root directory for uh, all my examples here. What's kind of cool is that you can pick your raw C drive and it'll search through your whole C drive for anything that's an Eclipse project. So if I wanted to grab all three of these I could have went and let's just go browse and it'll find all three of those. So you've got to kind of get the top level folder of each one of the projects. So for now I'm just going to grab Enable Crystal um, and go finish. But we could have kind of brought them in all at the same time. And notice how it brings up this whole project into your workspace. Now the files, if I go into the folder where my workspace is at, the files aren't there but there is in this metadata folder information about where these files exist on the hard drive. So the same rules kind of apply. If you delete a file inside here, you're deleting it where the file actually exists on the hard drive. So, so you got to kind of be careful. Now this Enable Crystal project is, uh, it kind of enables the crystal that is on the quick stick board and gets things running instead of from the internal oscillator from a nice stable reference um, and uh, kind of gives us a known, uh, you know, a good time base. So what I want to do is notice there's a main.c, and I do a bunch of stuff in here and modify, you know, I/O and whatnot. Um, I kind of want to pull all this in, and let's go look for a minute here. Um, I have this CPU folder where uh, I enable. Here's the code for, you know, the clock. There's some header files. Now the other important thing is I enable something called the SysTick timer, which we'll talk about in uh, a different video. But I kind of enable this to kind of give me a, a one millisecond tick um, interrupt. I want to kind of bring all this in too. So one thing that's important I want to point out: we're gonna we're gonna grab everything. We're gonna we also want to get this sysinit file because um, this is gonna get uh, our interrupt vector. So. Instead of directly modifying this old one, I kind of want to get this stuff into the quick stick test. Now you can do it from within the IDE, but I want to kind of show you at a, a little bit lower level, you know, how you can do that. So there's my workspace there. Um, I want to bring up my other example code. So I'll bring these side by side. So here's generally what you do. So I'm going to go in my project, go in the sources, and I'll do in the clock setup and go in the sources. I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste everything over. So I want to copy and replace. I want all the new stuff. So that's the actual source files. Well, we need the header files, the include files that go with it. So I'm just going to copy that. I don't care about anything that was in my old project because that was just auto-generated stuff. So we'll go copy and replace. Now the last thing that's most important um, is 
we need the interrupt vector code so um, or at least the pointer table so we're going to go under the startup code um, project setting startup code and we're going to grab that kineticist in it so that's everything we needed in that old project now notice how I did not get the other thing I didn't get is the linker files I just know because we're using the exact same chip they're exactly the same we don't need that um, and all of the other stuff like for example this debugger all that stuff are is stuff that is going to be built automatically in our new project so this is just gets our source code so what I'm going to do is you know get rid of that window I'm going to kind of close if we right click and say close project that kind of collapses the old one now one thing we kind of have to do is we're going to right click on the sources and say refresh and then it kind of brings in the new file. I'll close out. No, I don't want the old one. Yes, give me the new changes. Let's see if that made it. Um, and one thing that did not make it, let me try again here, is um, let me go back into my place where I have my examples quick stick clock setup there's my main and um, come back here sources maybe I just didn't copy and paste that so oop, I don't want to move I want to copy I want to keep my old one just the way it is so okay that there it went so now, notice there's a lot more in the main. We're going to have another video going through this, but it did copy it. So I have all these new files that I've kind of stitched into my, my project. Uh, and I didn't do anything else, so you'll notice we go on the sysinit. I now have this sysTick IRQ function, so I, so I got that. So what we'll do now is just go project, build all. So it should build without any problems with my examples. Ooh, error 21. Expected. Oh. One thing that we have to do now is, um, and I kind of did this on purpose so we see the problem, is that notice I have this include called clock.h. Well, clock.h, where does he exist? He exists in the project headers uh, and under the CPU. Well, by default, the only place that it looks for header files is this within project headers, not in a subfolder. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go right-click on our project, and we've just got to go tell Eclipse where everything's at, because I had it set up in my old project, but not in my new one. So go under C++ Build. We go under Settings, and these are the settings for the compiler. Well, if we go under Compiler, under Input, this is where the preprocessor is set up, and by default, you notice it includes search paths. It says project he headings under this uh, um, variable called project directory path. This is wherever your project's at. So what we're going to do is we're going to say add. We want to get a new folder for it to look in. We'll say look in our workspace under the quick stick test project in the CPU folder. So what we did there is told it, so whenever it does this include directive, it's now going to look under the CPU folder as well. So go project, uh, we'll just go build all. And now it's happy because it found what it needed to. Now the next thing we could have done is you could have put the path like that. What this says is look starting at the project headers folder look in cpu slash clock dot h so sometimes when you stitch together projects part of the um, part of the process is making sure all the dependencies can be found but that was one of the most common ones i just kind of wanted to show you show you that so if you add a new code and it can't find files that that's where you tell it to go look for header files and 99 percent of the problems you have with using other people's code is getting that organized. Um, so now that we've built it, uh, we, we have this new code. So we have our quick stick example um, kind of ready to go. We're not going to dig in today, but there's one last thing. Let's say I just wanted to get rid of, I'm not going to use that example code. If we hit delete, 
we can eliminate it from our workspace. Now, if we do this, it actually, this doesn't delete that old project on the hard drive. It just deletes the reference to it uh, in our workspace. If this was checked, it would also blow it away on the disk, but we don't want to do that. We just want to get rid of it and go from there. So now we have our example uh, with, with, with this test code in it. So uh, from there, uh, next time we're going to take a look at this code uh, a little more in detail, uh, kind of see what it does, and it gets some basic uh, things working inside of the chip.